Hi, my name is Mike with SideFX, and today we'll be going over the null node. So let's drop down a geometry container, jump inside, and give ourselves a null. Now right as we place it down, you'll notice that nothing happens. And that's because the null is an empty object. It doesn't really do anything. It contains no geometry, and it performs no operations. So what can it be used for? Well, if you've ever used any of the shelf tools in any capacity, you might have seen that some of them place down nulls at the end of very long streams of data. So let me give you an example of that. Let's pull this to the side a bit, give ourselves a sphere. We can just change this to polygon. And now we're going to come up to the vellum shelf and just select something like vellum strut softbody. Now we can select our sphere and hit enter. And Houdini will create a vellum softbody simulation for us and drop us into the dotnet. But right now we can jump back out and go back to our initial geometry container. Now you can see that the shelf tool has placed down a number of new nodes for us. But the nodes themselves and what they do aren't as important as the two nulls at the very end. These two nulls, Geo and Khan, tell Houdini exactly where to look in order to grab certain data for operations it may need to perform down the line. In this case, we're able to access the geometry of this stream from this Geo node and the constraints generated by the stream from the Khan node. And so if we jump back to that dop net we were in and we scroll up to the vellum source, you can see in the parameters that it is in fact linked up to those two nulls. And so this is a great way to keep yourself organized when you know that you're going to need to access certain bits of data later down the line. And it's even more helpful when you're working with something like Vellum that can often have three streams of data passing through one node. And as an added bonus, if we come into this Operator Chooser menu and begin to select our nodes from our network manually, you can see that the capitalized nodes get automatically sent to the top of the menu. And so, by feeding a piece of important data into a null and naming it something in capitalized letters, you'll always have easy access to it whenever the time comes to pick it out from all of the other nodes in your network. So a good thing to be aware of. You're also able to use it to visualize streams of data that you otherwise wouldn't be able to see. There's also a good example of this back in our initial geometry. So right now you can see we have these two vellum constraint nodes, but if we visualize them, we're only really able to visualize the geometry and not so much the constraints inside. And so by taking a null and feeding it into whatever stream of data we want to see, in this case the constraints, we're able to isolate only that data so that the other two don't get in the way. And for one final technique with nulls that's just a little bit advanced, we're going to talk about editing the parameter interface. Because just like every other node in Houdini, nulls also allow you to edit their parameters. And so we do this by coming up to this gear, going to the Edit Parameter Interface button, and then clicking and dragging any of the parameters over from the left to the root of our existing parameters. So in this case, let's just grab a float, for example, and drop it into the root. And now as we hit Accept, you can see that that float has appeared in the parameters of our null. So what this means is, if your network ever gets too large and you only want to access a certain number of very important parameters in a very large sea of nodes, you're able to take those parameters and promote them to your null so you're able to control all of them through one easy-to-access parameter window. So if we were to promote something like the uniform scale of our sphere, we can actually link that up to this value here. So right-click on the parameter and select Copy Parameter. Then come to the one you want to control, right-click again, and select Paste Relative References. And so now, the radius of our sphere is able to be controlled through our null. And so, as the size of your node network increases, and you're able to promote more and more important parameters to your null, you'll still have full access to all of the values that you need in one easy-to-use parameter window, rather than having to search all over your network to make those modifications. This has been the Null Node. Thank you for watching.